This video is in response to a question from a viewer on a video I did a couple weeks ago when I used constrained components to assemble that pencil sharpener assembly. And they were asking, how would you assemble that top cap onto the pencil sharpener assembly? So I'm gonna show a couple different ways on how you could do that. So let's dive right in. So this video is in response to a question that was posed on a video I did a couple weeks ago when I showed how to assemble the pencil sharpener assembly using the constrain components command. And I just basically put this cap on top of this gray part and they were like, well, how would you simulate how it would actually get assembled? And it's kind of hard to see, but um, I'm going to move this cap and you can see there's this ledge right here. And then there's this, um, lip on the gray part and it basically rotate it push it down and then rotate it um, to sit underneath that lip and it's like spring loaded and then the spring pushes it back up against um, this uh, ledge that you see right there and that's how it's kind of held in place in real life now unfortunately there's not a great way to simulate that so I'm going to show three different ways on how you could position this part and how you could show that that's how this part gets assembled. So the first way is to just use the constrained component. So I'm going to move this part out of the way um, and use the constrained components command. And I like to start with the largest feature first. So I'm going to do this cylinder here to this cylinder here. And I'm going to say OK, just so you can see what it did. So if I grab this part, you can see that I can rotate it and slide it. So it's almost like it created a cylindrical joint. And we can live kind of simulate what's going to happen. So we push it down and then we rotate it under and that's how it's going to kind of get held into place. So that's what we're trying to show is how this gets assembled. Now, unfortunately, you know, it's, it can slice through the other parts. There's, there's no relationships there yet. So I'm going to edit this constraint and let's add in another constraint. I'll go ahead and zoom up. And what I want to say is that the top of this arm right here is going to rest underneath the bottom of that ledge. Now this arm is kind of buried. So I'm going to click and hold my left mouse button and it allows me to probe through. So you can see the first face in the list is the outside cylindrical face. And then we have the top of the ledge and then we have the other face. So I'm going to pick this one here. I'll rotate and then let's pick um, the bottom of this, this ledge here. So I'm going to click that face there and we just created a secondary constraint. I'll say OK. Now if I move this part around you'll notice it's more like a revolute joint if i move up and down it's not sliding up and down like the cylindrical joint it's only moving like a revolute and so i can rotate this around but you can see we can still make it go through um, the, the side of this this catch or whatever you want to call it over here okay so we need to either create another constraint or I'm going to show another trick here. So I'm going to zoom up. I have this flat face right here on the edge of this part here. And then there's a flat face right here. It's kind of hard to highlight that I could line those two up, but we want to tell when the part actually physically hits over here. So I'm not going to use a constrained component. I'm actually going to use a different command called tangent relationship. So I'm going to say tangent relationship and I want to know when um, this curved face, so I'm going to zoom up, click and hold and select that curved face hits, let me go ahead and rotate around here, that flat face right there and it says I already have a relationship, which is the um, constrained components, but I'm basically kind of like adding this in. So I'm going to say continue. And now you can see how that kind of moved over a little bit. We can kind of see that that's hitting there. And I'll say, okay. And we now have 
where that surface is hitting that flat face right there. Now, unfortunately, as I was looking at this, we see that we have a, you know, a blend right here that this is kind of clashing with. Um, so in reality, there should be a, a, a blend on this surface here, but we're not going to worry about that in this video. Um, but we've now constrained this cap to be fully constrained where it can't move anymore and it's in its final position. So I used constrained components and then I also used tangent relationship. Now, one of the other methods I'm going to show is contact sets where you physically rotate the part and wait until it physically hits and can't go any further. So I, that's the third method I'm going to show. The, the second method I'm going to show is more like if you wanted to um, show somebody how this is going to get assembled. So we're going to move over to the animation workspace. And I'm going to move my slider over here to this little stage icon. And we're going to set the stage before we do anything. So I'm going to drag that over. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and delete this camera movement. Uh, and kind of set the stage the way I want this to look. So I'm going to rotate this around a little bit, like so, maybe zoom in. And then I want to start with this cap up above the part. And then we'll start doing our animation. So I'm going to use the transform components. I'll select the cap. Now this is very important. We need to uh, document how far we're moving things because we need to move them back to their original position. So when I move this cap up, I'm going to start to drag up. We can see, uh, for example, around maybe 1.5 looks good. So I'm going to type in 1.5 and I want to remember that. Then I'm also going to, it's already in its finished rotation. So I need to rotate this so it can slide down you know, past this opening right here. So that looks like 60 degrees. Let's go maybe like 70 degrees. So I'm going to type in 70. So we moved it one and a half inches and we rotated it 70 degrees. So now what I can do is drag my slider. Let's just say um, I wanted to take four seconds to move. So I'll, I'll drag my slider to four. Then I'll use the transform drag this back down and I can just type in minus 1.5 and it's going to put it back into its original starting position. Then I can come in here and drag this maybe to like 8 for example and say transform and rotate and I'm going to type in minus 70 degrees and I'll say OK. And what you can see is for this basket cap, in the first four seconds, it does a transform. And then after that, it does a rotate. So if I were to slide this back to the beginning and kind of scrub through, we can see that it's gonna drag down. And then once that's complete, then it rotates to the left 70 degrees. We can also hit rewind and then hit play. And you'll see it's gonna play it like so, and then rotate. So this is like a way to show how the part is actually getting assembled. Now that rotate kind of took a little bit too long. Maybe we could say we want that to be a little bit slower. So I'm going to drag that um, to be something like this. And now when we play it, you'll see the move is kind of slow. And then the rotates a little bit faster. And then when we're done with that, we can say publish video, and this will allow us to create a video that you could share with somebody, for example. So that's the second method to show how to assemble the cap. Now the third method is to use the contact sets. Now unfortunately there's an issue with this because of how I designed the parts, which you're going to see here in just a moment, um, that we're going to have to fix first. Uh, but it's a pretty easy fix. So what contact sets allow you to do, I'm going to go ahead and um, take a look, edit this con uh, constraint set. And 
I'm going to delete just the second one. So we're back to this um, kind of like slider. Let me see. Let me go here. Oh, and I'll get rid of the tangent. Let me get rid of the tangent relationship. Yeah, that makes more sense. Okay, so we're we're in this kind of position here where we can do the the um, cylindrical type joint, but you can see it's it's going to hit stuff, etc. So I'm going to move it up here. If I say new contact set, and I want to see when that body and that body collide. Now, if I drag this up, no problem. As I come down, you're going to see it stops. <laughs> and we haven't even gotten this ledge down below, which is kind of frustrating and kind of annoying. Well, the reason for that is because um, as I designed this, I didn't leave any clearance. And you can actually kind of see that right here. So the diameter of this clear plastic part and the diameter of this gray part are the exact same. And so it's saying, hey, we're touching, we're clashing, I can't go any further. So what we need to do is, is to change that. So let me go ahead and disable that, or I'm going to just delete that last um, contact set. And then we're going to make some changes. So I can click on this face here and just do a press pull. It says it's 1.25. I'm just going to say 1.26. I'll say OK. Now the problem with that is what it just did is it made these little arms separate. So I need to adjust those also. I need to basically offset these faces also. So I'm going to grab this face here, press pull 0 0.01, say OK. And then if I were to combine, I'll go ahead and capture that position for now. If I combine that guy and that guy together, watch what happens over here. You'll see it combined those together. I'll do the same over here. Combine those two, and now we're back to the single basket. Now I have to do the same thing um, for the inside. I didn't leave any distance for here, so I'm going to offset um, this just a little bit like so. You can kind of see how I'm changing that. So I'll say minus 0 0.01, and I'll do the same thing on this face here. Okay. So I just made it so it can actually fit uh, around the, uh, the model here. Okay, so now if we were to add in our contact set, and I drag this down, you can see that it actually goes further now, and it stops there because it's actually hitting other geometry. And then I can rotate this around. And so it's doing live calculation of where it's hitting the other body. So you can see as I lift back up, it's stopping because it's hitting this shelf right here. So I can rotate around and now it's stopping because it's hitting the vertical arm of this, this L shape recess. So those are the three different ways that you can simulate how you would assemble this basket cap to the top of this gray part in the pencil sharpener assembly. I hope you learned something new and enjoyed that video. If you did, make sure you like and subscribe to be notified of upcoming videos. If you need help learning Fusion, visit my webpage at cadedllc.com. And as always, have fun learning Fusion.